What's going on again, uh, fellow liquor enthusiasts? Uh, sorry about the little hiatus, um, but I had some things going on. But uh, I did want to hop in and today discuss a, a unique uh, alcoholic beverage. Uh, I wouldn't even call it a spirit, which is one of my favorite words. Um, this time it is not a liquor review, but it is a liqueur review. As you can probably see here in front of me, I have a kind of a wide uh, array of uh, alcoholic beverages uh, or liqueurs, aka uh, um, cordials or uh, schnapps. Those are all interchangeable terms when you are discussing uh, liqueurs. This will actually be a nice short review. I'm not going to do any tasting because they, they, they just range too dramatically to give you an overall review of the cores. But I will kind of clear up some misconceptions and give you a little more um, insight on what exactly makes up a liqueur. Um, and then we'll discuss some of the examples that I brought up from the, uh, from the basement bar when we're done. Uh, as I mentioned, there are several terms for liqueur, but it just, it, it basically means in, it, it's a sweetened uh, distilled spirit. It's not a natural spirit like a whiskey or a vodka or, or a brandy or a cognac. Or it, it's, it's oftentimes a neutral spirit, um, but it can be based on a liquor. Uh, the difference is it is, like I said, unnaturally sweetened. Um, <clears throat> typically, they uh, add um, you know, just copious amounts of sugar. Um, oftentimes, they'll infuse them with fruits or herbs or creams or spices or nuts or even flowers to kind of give them a, a very, very unique experience on, on the palate. Um, they're usually very syrupy, unnaturally syrupy opposed to a natural spirit. Uh, that's one way you can kind of pick them out from the crowd. They are usually very, very sweet. Uh, typically, they are uh, lower alcohol um, uh, ABVs opposed to uh, an actual liquor because they're kind of intended uh, the majority of the time to mix or maybe have for a, an after dinner a little sweet taste. Um, but that's, again, those are generalities. Those aren't uh, steadfast rules. Um, you know, they, they typically stick to a specific profile, a flavor profile, if you will. Um, like, uh, like a curacao, for instance, that's a type of liqueur, that's an orange flavor. Uh, <clears throat> Grand Marnier is the big dog in that world. Uh, Creme de la Frisa, whatever it's called, the raspberry type. Um, so they're all, it's very different. They're, they're all very, very unique. There's no kind of pigeonholing them together. Um, there are, however, a few uh, distinct classes. So some types, if you hear these terms, these are liqueurs, uh, absinthe. And I know I've talked to you guys that, I've talked to you uh, incessantly about that. I promise we will review it. I'm actually just, Time out here. I'm actually waiting to uh, obtain the proper absinthe fountain. Um, that's another story for another day, but that's the delay on the absinthe. <clears throat> okay, so absinthe, absinthe is a type of liqueur. Uh, amarettos, uh, like I said, curacaos, um, Irish creams, uh, triple sec, um, and then and then just kind of hybrids and. And sugar concoctions are also examples of, of liqueurs. So a couple of them I want to discuss. Very, very common ones are cinnamon. Cinnamon schnapps. Um, fire water. Um, just basically red, syrupy, cinnamony, hot, artificially flavored alcohol. Really nice on the palate. Typically very easy to drink because of the fact that it is artificially sweetened. Um, Fire and ice, or fire water, that's one. One, actually the first liquor, this is a little, uh, a little insight of my world. The first liquor I ever drank as a, as a youngster was a stuff called, um, uh, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. Avalanche was the, uh, the spearmint or the peppermint version. And mm, I'll think of it. Anyways, it was red hot, like had like sugary rocks, fire or something, or I don't know. Anyways, it was a, it was an absolutely disgusting red cinnamony alcohol with like sugar cubes in the bottle. 
Avalanche and Aftershock. Aftershock, that's what it's called. Uh, here's actually one of my favorite liqueurs. This stuff is called Baron Jaeger. It's got like a little German flair to it, kind of like a honeycomb bottle. Um, this stuff is delicious. If you like honey, try some Baron Jaeger. Really good with like ginger ales or maybe even um, sprites, um, lemons, things like that really set it off. This stuff is delicious. One of my favorites. Another common one you'll see. Good old-fashioned Goldschlager. Every 21-year-old D-bag at the bar has had a couple shots of these. This is actually a Diageo owned label. This is another cinnamon, um, cinnamon liqueur. If you shake this one up, I'm gonna move out of my chair to give you a nice little view. They actually claim, see these little, little snow globe? They actually claim that's real gold. Who knows? It's, it's a fun, again, it's a fun story and it's a good, uh, uh, it's good bottling and marketing. Yet another cinnamon one, Fireball. This has really grown in popularity over the last, I'd say, decades. This one's only 66%. Uh, Goldschlager is, Goldschlager is actually 87%. Baron Jaeger is 35% or 70 proof. And Firewater is uh, 100 proof. That's about as strong as you'll see in the core. Moving on. This one I actually just recently purchased. I'm really curious about it. It's called Black Maker Root Beer Liqueur. I'm a big root beer guy, and I thought that sounded really good. Um, and there's a recipe on the back of this one for Whip Maker. One ounce Black Maker Root Beer Liqueur, and one ounce Pinnacle Whipped. That might be fun. That's 70 proof. Patty's Devil Apple. Premium liqueur with apple and cinnamon flavors, blended with Irish whiskey, Patty's Irish whiskey. So that's that's a liqueur that's based on Patty's uh, Irish whiskey, which is an actual actual whiskey maker. And then probably, man, this may be the most popular of all is uh, Southern Comfort. A lot of people will mistake this for um, uh, a whiskey or a bourbon. It was originally bourbon based when they produced this. I read. It isn't anymore. It's a neutral spirit, and they have all these artificial bourbony flavors and peach and all sorts of things are kind of thrown in here. Uh, that's a 70 proof. So a lot of times the proofing of these, especially with these ones that aren't um, glaringly uh, artificial, will fool people. They'll think this is a bourbon or a scotch or whiskey. It's not. This is liqueur. Well, that's it. I just did, I wanted to kind of give this a very, very brief overview um, frankly, I think you, most of you would agree that it's not really worth a whole lot of discussing. They're, they're fake. You know, they, they, they can be fun, but they don't have a lot of natural personality. And, and you can only usually drink a couple of these drinks after, uh, after a while. You kind of get a little bit of, uh, you know, that sweet stomachy acid feeling. So, I don't know. Um, I enjoy them from time to time. But, again, I don't want to spend a lot of your time reviewing the course. But there it is. Liqueurs 101, and until next time, glasses up, glasses up. Talk to you guys soon.